you swim 4K, you bike 180, and then you run 42. Mm -hmm. And even during the race, you're not going to get the result, except if you're consistent with your effort for the whole 12 or 13 or 15 hours. That's going to get you to the result. If you go fast in the beginning and you end up walking the marathon, that then that's not consistent. Does it get easier with time? I don't think it gets easier because with time, of course, you age a little bit. So you have to approach training in a different way. But you become... Uh, experience and you become more mature so you know what your body can handle or cannot handle and you choose your races wisely and you know what you can excel in and what and what are your limitations since I was a child that I wanted to be a dentist because I was just like fascinated by all the little tools that dentists have and their offices and the drawers and what it comes from the drawer so uh, it has a bad reputation with us patients I'm pretty sure so yeah. imagine how we feel what if I asked you what was your proudest moment Thank you for coming, Dr. Dina Atayib. Uh, I'll start by introducing Dr. Dina, the first Saudi and first Arab. I just want to make sure that all are recording. <clears throat> all are recording. Mm -hmm. The first Saudi and first Arab female to complete the Ironman Kona World Championships. Dr. Dina, I have a problem with it being called Ironman. A lot of people do. Iron person. Iron person. I almost feel like wrong and like incorrect to say Iron Man. Can we call it Iron Woman? No, because uh, what many people don't know is Iron Man is the name of the company. Hmm. It is not, the competition has been known, it, it is triathlon, but Iron Man is the name of the company. So there's no company that's called Iron Man or Iron Woman or Iron Person. It is just called Iron Man. And this it's was- It's the brand. And it was probably established well before gender equality became a thing in exactly. the US. Exactly. The late, I think, uh, early 80s. Early 80s. To complete the Iron Man Kona World Championship multiple times so far, Dr. Dina has completed over a hundred triathlons. Mashallah, tabarakallah. Dr. Dina has a medical degree from Tufts University, where today she serves as a trustee. Today she runs her own clinic called Dentalia here in Jeddah. I'm about to take an appointment where she is a consultant, periodontist, and a gum specialist. I have inflamed gums and I've been putting it off and that's why I asked if I can come see you so you can take a look at my gums. The dentistry scares me. I thought maybe I have to come and see you first. <laughs> <laughs> now that you came, I'm going to return yes. the... <laughs> Shukran. <laughs> uh, Dr. Dina, it sounds like a hell of a lot on your plate, pardon my French, between the iron... Uh, lady iron woman iron man that you are between running your own practice and uh being a mother of three how on earth did you manage to have them all prosper and float at the same time um they f yeah, exactly they floated at at the same time but uh it's like wearing different hats uh, there were times of my life where uh being a mother was my priority there were other times where being a dentist was my priorities. And now that my kids are older, I've got more time on my plate to uh, be an athlete. Mm. So they didn't all happen around the same time. I started first by being a mother. The sequence is, is a little bit strange or unusual because it started by being a mother. Then after that, it moved to being a dentist and a mother. And then after that, it moved to being the three of them. <laughs> Long days, I mean, if you can reflect back at your early days in, in, in dentistry, were you in there for as long as someone is at a corporate job for? You're taking eight, nine, ten hours a day? Uh, you mean to uh, to work yeah, or to in, study? In, or in, Well, let's start with studying. Yeah, studying takes a long time. And it took me uh, between the dental degree and the postgrad about 12 years to complete my studies. 12 years yeah. from when you started learning till you became a certified dentist. That I became a periodontist. A so, period. Yeah. So, so I first uh, went to dental school here, and then I worked for the university. Then I got a scholarship to go to Tufts. Then I did my periodontal degree, followed by my master's, and then I came back. Mm -hmm. Worked as an assess <clears throat> assistant professor in the university for a few years and retired uh, a few years ago uh, just to free up my plate because I couldn't manage everything. And, uh, I would say. <laughs> and right now I'm just at my clinic uh, practicing or uh, training or being a mom. What was the most challenging? And, and typically I leave this question till the end, but let's, you know, in the spirit of doing things differently, 
from the three, motherhood, dentistry, and triathlonist, what was the most challenging for you? I don't think you can say one is more challenging than the other, because if, you know, if one of your kids have a crisis or they're unhappy or they're, they're unhealthy, this becomes a crisis and it demands a lot of your time. If you're, you know, if you're having problems at work or you've got a lot of cases that you've got to take care of or some challenging issues, then that becomes your crisis. If, you know, you're not training well and you've got a race and or you have to prepare for the race, then again, that becomes a priority. Physical pain, though, probably being a triathlonist. We love physical pain. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm listening to David. Why do you think, why do you think I did 100? <laughs> Does it get easier with time? I don't think it gets easier because with time, of course, you age a little bit. So you mm. have to approach training in a different way. But you become uh, experienced and you become more mature. So you know what your body can handle or cannot handle and you choose your races wisely and you know what you can excel in and what and what are your limitations if you skip training for a couple of i won't say a month because you've probably never done that if you skip it for two weeks is getting back on it does it take you so much further back from where you were initially not i used to think that but i don't think so because you still have the muscle memory of all the years of training that you've had and it's, i think it's very healthy uh, for an athlete to take some time off. Otherwise you burn out and you just get bored. And if you don't do something with passion, then why do it? What made you one day say, you know what, Dina, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put our body through this because X, Y, Z. I think everybody from what I've seen, everyone has a story behind their eyes. Everyone is doing this race that ultra, the endurance races for a reason that that gets them motivated, that gets them to move, that gets them, you know, to do the impossible, put their body through physical and mental stress, whether they're doing it to run away from their life or they're doing it to run to something that they want or they're doing it because their life is so stressful that they need something that is even more stressful that would make the stress that is in their life feel a little bit better. Or they're doing it for for the ego, or they're doing it f to prove something, either to themselves or to the other. But everyone is doing this for a reason. Have, did you feel that you were able to handle life stress better, having put in your body through what you have put in it through? Does it almost like minim minimize what life stress is about because you have these endorphins that you get to enjoy on a daily? Yes, and definitely doing completing something that is longer than what you think you could do or almost achieving the impossible. So going through a, a race like a full Ironman, which is, a, you know, like a, a race of, of 12 or 13 or 15 hours. So there is a shift of there's like extreme physical pain, but there is a shift where your mind has to control your body and your mind has to be in charge. And that is... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Dr. Dina, 15-hour race? Oh, I didn't tell you how long the Ironman <laughs> I heard you correctly. You yeah. heard me correctly. Marathon well, well, is let me, uh, let me get, let me, Let's go back to the distance of an Ironman. So an Ironman is about a 4K swim, 3.8K uh, swim, 180-kilometer bike ride, followed by a marathon. So if you do the math correctly, the winner would do an, the Ironman in just maybe sub-8 hours. But the average person will finish anywhere around, I think, 12 hours, 10 to 12 hours is the average fit person. What's the run? How many kilometers? 42. 42. A marathon. Which is your, your, your run of the mill marathon. Like mm -hmm. you end it. Okay. And you do the swim first so you don't drown. Exactly. And so it's hard. You swim 4K, you bike 180, and then you run 42. Mm -hmm. you're, can you uh, take me back to your first triathlon? Um, starting the race in the race, what was something that you did not account for that, ex excuse me for saying it, but that slapped you, <laughs> that, that sh the, shook the, you? It, it, because what you, you never train for that long length of time, never. Like how much, the longest training day would probably be a six hour day, but you would never put your, because you can't recover from that if you train if you, you train that long. So the first race really 
you know, takes you by surprise because you don't think that it will hurt as much and it will go as long. And you get to a point where like, okay, you know, we're now halfway into it, but we still have another six hours to go. <laughs> My God. A 4K swim so, takes an hour? A, it, between an hour, an hour and a half. And the 180 bike ride? About six hours. Six hours. And then the run about five, like your marathon, maybe six, because you've just done all of that. All of that, exactly. Then you've got the nutrition and what your body can handle and how, because you need to eat to refuel your body. And the biggest challenge that almost everybody has is how can they keep food in? Oh, pe how, people get it out, huh? No, okay, but like, how can you, you're keeping it in, meaning how can your body uh, absorb that f that uh, nutrition and those calories while you're sweating and exerting so much energy? The gut is not happy with what you've done to it. Is this good for the body? Not necessarily. It's good for the mind. <laughs> but then the, the, but then the euphoria that you get crossing that finish line you feel like you've won the gold medal at the olympics like you feel like a champion and and the race atmosphere they make you go through that finish line like a champion and just as when you cross that you the first thing that crosses at least my mind is like if i can do that i can do anything in life if i can like if my body can survive this and if my mind can be strong to control my body and get me through the finish line there's nothing else that can stop me. So answering back your question, yes, it makes everything in life in perspective. Healthy body, healthy mind. It brings back the uh, old saying of, oh, it, it feels like I just ran a marathon. <laughs> plus, plus. <laughs> it should actually be called now. It feels like I just ran a tri I, I just completed a triathlon. Um, with regards to f food, I wanted to go back and ask you about the food. What are you consuming? I, I see these runners gel of some sort. That's a banana or something that you would also. Uh, you've got to calculate and see what goes, what your body can tolerate. But you want simple sugars that you that your gut will absorb. Quickly. What do you What do you have? For me? Yeah, when you are doing a try one of the one hundred triathlons. <laughs> Mostly, like like you said, you know, gels, gels. or or uh, like different stages. Of course, on the bike, you can absorb more. You mm. can eat a little more solid food. But when you run, you can only take very simple carbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 100. You know. Is there one plan for Saudi anytime? I know marathons are something that is currently functioning. We saw in Riyadh, in Jidda. I've seen bike races in Al Ula. Has, is a triathlon something on the cards for future Saudi? Oh, it is happening. I'm part of, a, I'm a board member on the Triathlon Federation. All right. The Saudi Triathlon Federation. So. Uh, this is our our uh, second year. We're going into our second year, and we've uh, this year we have fifteen races uh, planned in Saudi. In Saudi Arabia, we had uh, I, I think about maybe six or seven races last year. I had no idea. Yeah, and we just hosted the West Asia uh, Triathlon Championship in Khobar, wow. which was like a big international competition. And these races are open for everyone. There's usually. Uh, it's usually in Riyadh, in Khobar, and in uh, in Jeddah, or like in the different regions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's also duathlon, which is a bike and run. There's one in Medina. There's uh, in different areas that don't have access to um, open water. See, that's more my tempo. <laughs> like, like just you know, two, not 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 two, the three. Okay, that's how I started. I started with two, so? and I told myself I'll never do the th the third one because it, swimming scared me in open water, but. Look where I am now. It, so, I think it chooses you, this thing. You can try, but eventually you just get sucked into it. Yeah. Now you can't imagine a life without it. Yeah. Yeah. Die hard. SubhanAllah. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, dentistry. Mm, all right. Why dentistry? Because I'm always attracted to like strange things. <laughs> And I like I knew from since I was a child that I wanted to be a dentist because I was just like fascinated by all the little tools that dentists have and their offices and the drawers and what it comes from the drawer. So uh, it has a bad reputation with us patients. I'm pretty sure. So yeah. imagine how we feel when everyone comes to us feeling scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like dentistry more than any other doctor. I remember uh, when I was younger, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd go with my mom to the eye doctor and I'd have no problem doing that. Go always. We actually used to go to Boston for that, for the eye doctor. But God forbid I have a, a, a cleaning scheduled. 
uh, I'd have trouble sleeping the night before. I think it's the drill. But why, why, let me ask you, why did that happen? Like, well, when did you develop this? Young age. There must be a, a story behind it. There must be a trauma. There must there be was, a... There was. I had my front tooth knocked out in a rugby game at the age of 12. Mm -hmm. Number nine. I even know the numbers. I never knew they were numbered <laughs> until. And um, I remember, actually, the whole thing fell in my hand with the root. And within a second, it disappeared in a pool of blood in my hand. Stuck it back in. It uh, didn't catch on. And that's when the complications of my front mm -hmm. four took a life of its own. I think I'm on my fourth set of veneers. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that's when, and I've been very patient. I've been the model patient with dentistry, but I've just had enough. Mm -hmm. Then the odd root canal here and the odd bridge here. And then, oh, you know, one of them's loose, which is an issue I'm facing right now. Got to do all four again. I, every dentist I see, I tell them I, uh, I have visited way more than your average 30 plus year old patient has visited dentists. Mm -hmm. It's a deep history. So I've just had enough of it because that tooth fell at the age of 20. Right. So everyone that is usually scared of a dentist, they either had a trauma or their parents did. So mm -hmm. they grew up with the parents afraid of a dentist and then the kids, you know, Inherited it Inherit almost, yeah. That, yeah. If yeah. you brush and floss every day, two or two times each, would you be in a would you be in a position where you never have to see a dentist, or do we all eventually have to face complications with our teeth that would eventually have us get get that drill in? I, our I mouth? don't think everybody will face complications. No, but I think it's nice, just like you do your you know, maybe blood test once a year. Mm. You, you don't have to do it. You could wait until you develop symptoms and, you know, you have a high blood pressure or you have something that is abnormal and decide to do a blood test then. But if you go at least once a year, then that maybe would prevent you from, like, what you did, you know, having to go often and do more treatments than necessary yeah. and, and just um, have that more than average person visits. And, and neglecting it just makes it worse. It's one of the worst things to neglect. Because not everything is painful. Hmm. Yeah. Like gum disease are not always painful. Hmm. There, you would have discomfort, but you wouldn't have like severe pain unless it's an abscess or something like that. Hmm. Okay, I can't talk about dentistry. <laughs> <laughs> is either one a form? No, we, we talked about the first one, but does the second one ever act as a form to de-stress? to get your mind off things. When you're focusing on a patient and, and you have the hook and you have the drill and all the stuff I love, do you like block out anything else that's happening in your life? Do you get away from it all? Yeah, because you've got to put like 100% of your focus. Like there's no, there's no room for anything else. And if you're distracted, would, would you want to be under the hands of a distracted dentist? Probably not. I have been once. <laughs> I have been once, yeah. It's not a, good, not a good feeling. It was actually a horrific experience. The guy just like had a meltdown in front of me. And I was like, what, do you want to just stop sweating? And I was being a good patient. <laughs> uh, one of the reasons why I'm, I want to come to you to, to, to help you with my dentistry <laughs> solutions because I don't want to go back to where I was. I won't name them, but maybe one day I do. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sure at the end of the day, everybody you know, tries their best, but also dentists have lives, you know, they might be going under stress, there may, might be something, you know, happening, they have a child that is sick and their phone is ringing nonstop. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like my duty in, like, if you come to me and I'm treating you, it's my responsibility to be fully present for you. That's what it's all about, to be present. Mm -hmm. It's something I try to do this it's something that I try to do in, in, in the podcast as well. Just phone on silent, block out everything for the hour or two, give it your all. Because if you don't give it your all, like the audience will, will know. If the dentist is not giving his all, the audience will know. Um, At the end of the day, we are all exchange of energy. So you will feel that my energy is distracted. But also when I'm training, I also have to be fully present. Because if I'm training, but my mind is in the clinic or I'm constantly checking my phone or I'm waiting for an email, then... I'm also not being very productive and mm -hmm. I'm not giving my 
body the chance to, the chance to to do its best. Yeah. But now we live in a world that is there's so much stimulus and so much distraction that it's hard. It's very hard to be focused and present. عجينة محضرة بشغف قوامها خفيف وهش وطعمها ولا أروع You just reminded me that, um, God, what a story. Lance Armstrong, this guy was a multi, God knows how many times he won Tour de France. And then he got busted for, I want to say, I think it's doping. So. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the most phenomenal falls from grace I've ever seen in my life. And now you told me that he, you actually not I heard, but he started his own podcast, his own, mm -hmm. his own show. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's crazy how you can go from, one thing to completely nothing. I think Nike even dropped him right after it cool. to now in the media, in the media business. But he offers also the polarity because when he commentates on like that's something the Tour de France or the stages of the Tour de France, he will tell you what it's like to be mm. an athlete and what happens and and you know, is this guy like legit or is he not legit or this, why did he do this move? Like he'll give you the inside scoop, which is like fascinating. Usually the other podcasts, they're also great, but they'll give you a different perspective. He was in that seat before yeah. he, he lived mm -hmm. that life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and he's not, he doesn't filter anything out. He just- He's all out, <laughs> yeah. I remember that story. It's, it's very, quite an entertaining show. Cause yeah. he, when he was winning Tour de France, he was like everyone's, you know, favorite athlete. He was just everything. And did he get his awards stripped from him? Uh, they can, they could only strip. I think there was something, I'm not sure of the fact, but within 10 years. Uh. So they stripped him of some. I'm not sure they could strip him of like every single one, but I'm not sure of that fact. We got to check it. Uh, looking at the changes that you have seen, like when you left to the States to study for dentistry, Saudi was a completely different place. You look around today and what's happening and some of the verticals under Vision 2030, especially in the sporting landscape for females, female football leagues, uh, them participating in, in pretty much everything. Dania Agil in Dakar, she just finished mm -hmm. it. Um, uh, when you look at all that and you compare the before and now, how do you reflect on that? How does that make you feel? Uh, I, I'm, I'm very proud of what's happening. And this is like a great time to be an athlete because you get an amazing support. Like you don't get this support in, in other countries. You have a federation behind you. You have, you know, like the, the, being an athlete and you don't have to be even super talented, but to be someone that is passionate, that is committed, that is willing to do the work, you get tremendous support. You made me think actually that it, not only is it amazing for those who participate in it, but in the support that people are getting, mm -hmm. it encourages those who have not participated to think about participating. And it's not only exclusive for the elite athletes. It's available for everyone because part of our responsibility as a federation is not only develop a team that would, you know, go to the Olympics, but also spread the, the love of triathlon and spread the knowledge about tri triathlon to the community. So encourage a healthier lifestyle for everyone. You know, when we do these races and then people come to watch and they they would be just, you know, maybe on the Kurniche or something in the morning and they look and they're quite interested and they see the race and then they, you know, clap and then they come and ask us later. It's like, oh, so what is this and how can we participate and what do we need and when is your next race? And the kids are watching the events or we do also have a lot of uh, before the triathlon, either before or after you do a kid's race, whether it's a run race or a run swim. And this is great. It's it's a very positive uh, way of living. Inclusivity. Mm -hmm. People want to feel that they're a part of something. I feel it's and a part. It's being part of a community, <clears throat> and this is something that I lacked when I was here. I mean, when I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> I didn't go anywhere. I think you're you're thinking about the time before uh, the vision was 
put put in place or before the sport grew like sport, when yeah. i did this sport i've been doing this for 20 years 20 years sure. ago and it wasn't a big sport worldwide not only here so there weren't any races here there were a few races that were done maybe in dubai but see yeah, i mean nothing nothing at a, uh, the scale that it is now so i always lacked be, being part of a community And so when I would go, let's say, you know, to the States and train, everybody's part of a club and they've got the shirts and they're all training together and stuff. I was training on my own. So I love being part of communities and I love creating communities. And I think that is a very positive way to encourage each other to train, to, you know, like uh, have, a, have a community of support of people that, are, that share equal interest. You compare results as well. You know yeah, how much did you yeah, do on this? Yeah, yeah. You push each other. Yeah. You you encourage each other. They become your friends. You know, you go out and you maybe you have a coffee after the the ride or the run, and it's quite positive. Yeah, you know who it's, does it, and re- it's it's transformational. Like I've seen this. It is. I've seen yeah. how the culture changed. There's now running clubs, there's cycling clubs, there's triathlon clubs, and there's like a lot of uh, communities that are active and they're very healthy. We were missing that. It was a it was a void that has been filled. Mm-hmm. I see, you know, the jet the bikers, mm-hmm. you know, they're there like 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 a squadron of bees, you know, just going from one neighborhood to another. I'm like, you know, amazing. We have. A biking community now, yeah. bicycling community. Yes, yes. There's a big cycling community. And there are different clubs, and now, now even the teams that you had, Ahlika, the, all of these, they also have their cycling uh, uh, teams, men and women. Mm-hmm. It's come a, it's come a long yeah, way. A it's, long way in such a short time, which is amazing. It's very yeah. impressive. Yeah. Very proud of that. I'm sure you are recognized, and you are asked by these youngsters male and female and 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 they probably ask you you know how what what advice do you have to us who who want to become future marathonists or triathlonists is there a, a common bit of advice that you that you tell them that will that would help them uh, if they w- in their like pursuit I- to become what sh- what you are I, it, it, it's very individual so i became Like I pursued this passion because I just fell in love with triathlon and and found it to be something very challenging, very unique. Uh, I get bored easily, so this has three different sports that I could do. So it fitted my personality and I, I loved it. Now I feel everybody should have something that, that just ignites, you know, The, the, the power or the passion within them, whether it's, uh, you know, it could be tennis or it could be, not even doesn't have to be a sport. It could be drumming or music or, but just something that is outside their job, their normal routine life. It's far away from it. Far away that just, that will bring them joy. So I always, I always ask the, the athletes, like, why, what, why do you want to do this? And that's a very important question. Why do you want to do it? And the second question is, are you willing to do whatever you need to succeed in that? Because it's nice, yeah, I want to do that. I want to do triathlon. I want to be uh, an athlete. But are you willing to put in the work? Uh, no, not, not that much. Then the results won't be as good. Yeah. So I try to sit with the young athlete and try to mentor them and guide them a little bit. Also, there's the other extreme where like, I want to be a triathlete. I'll drop everything else in my life. But that's also not normal or healthy for you. <laughs> yeah. What's the key to being successful at that? At being a triathlete? Mm. I, I think balance. balance. It goes back to balance because... It, and it depends. Like there are some people that want to do this just once in their lifetime. It's a bucket list. They will do it. They're done. Okay, bye bye. I'm off to something else. And there are people that are crazy enough to want to do it over and over and over again. <laughs> so for that, if you want to, I might know someone who I think so who's done it over and over <laughs> and over. I... <laughs> so if you want to do that, then you have to have balance in your life, and because you're thinking of to be there as long as possible. I want to be in that sport, in this sport, as long as I'm, you know, possible. Yeah, long longevity. Possible and as, as long as it's healthy for me. 
Um, so for that, you need balance. You need balance between your social life, you need between your career, between your family, and they're all like different aspects that need to come in coherence together. You can't neglect one on behalf of the other or the other. Yeah, it's interesting you say balance because you know we always hear about consistency, we hear about discipline, we hear about hard work, but balance is not not a word that often gets bounced around. Because the sports take takes over your life, like it's you have to de dedicate so much time mm. in order to be good at it. So if you don't have the balance, something will fall. You know, whether it's your family, whether it's your, you know, your job, you're going out to your work, but you're late and you're not focused and you're tired or you're doing all of this, but you're super stressed and you're unhappy and you're unpleasant to be around with. So that's not balance. That's in my uh, eyes, this is not a key to success. So I would be happier if I do, if I'm slower at my Ironman, but I'm a balanced person that is content and that is happy and that still has a social life that I have, that I can still see my kids, that I can still, you know, go to work and be pleasant with, pleasant to be with. Imagine I'm a dentist and I'm a grumpy dentist because I'm super tired and I've been on my bike for five hours. I will come to you. <laughs> see, like it's a responsibility. Probably you have to have balance in order to have success and be happy. Probably also will reduce the likelihood of injury if you have balance. Yes, because then you would Push listen to your, your body. Your body. Yeah. yeah, you won't be over. But you reach this. I reached this recently, like not early years of my my training years. Because when you're new, you know, you're excited. I want to do this. I'll dedicate every single day of my life to get better. But then you reflect back and learn. And okay, well, I think you try. I tried like some years to train every. You know, I'd like follow the book and stuff and. But then when the race result didn't, wasn't as I anticipated, I became really angry and grumpy because I felt like, okay, well, I dedicated those three, four months and this is the result I got. Sustainability as well. Yeah, it's not sustainable. Yeah, that's we, we go all out. Mm -hmm. What kind of support did you get from family? How important was it for you to get the support you needed from family in order to excel in both those ventures, being a dentist and a triathlonist? Again, in order to succeed, you need the support of your family. If you, you, you do see many people go to the races alone and, and maybe they're happy that way, but it also it's great when you go with your family and you have someone at the finish line cheering you. And saying, oh, well done, you know, they're cheering you, they're happy and stuff. And But you need to be kind to your family so they'll come and support you. <laughs> so I think everyone needs support, whether it's from their family, from their friends, from their kids. From I'm lucky to have, like, my, my parents are my biggest support, my kids too. Um, Lana, my daughter, has always been there for me. Like, I call her before, I call two people before every race. Lana? and my mom. And and I would not start a race if I don't speak to them. <laughs> because they'll give me, you know, the like the mama to the really, or then they'll give me like the, come on, mom, you can do it. You're so strong. You got this. I'm cheering you. And everybody else, of course. I never do this, but I have to interject here. Your daughter, Lena, is married to my cousin and best friend. I have never seen support of a daughter to her mom, genuine heartfelt support, like it's written all over her face. I have not seen a daughter genuinely be so proud of her mom as she is of you. And I met her before I met you. True. I was like, I need to know a little bit more about this Dr. Dina, a <laughs> This person. crazy woman. <laughs> And when you say your, that your children support me in everything, I can, like I bet, it keeps you going. Absolutely, seeing them, especially Lana and, and everybody else too, Hisham and Tan. I still keep, uh, I have shirts where they have decorated when they were young, you know, they drew on the shirt, oh, my mom is, is fast, or the, you know, posters that they used to hold to it's the like finish line. It's like a superhero. It's like a superhero. Where's your happy place when you're running and you want to block everything out? What do you think of to distract? 
in a race or mm. yeah, on race day finish line finish line i always think like okay you know just imagine that finish line what it would feel like like just hear the crowd like take your mind to that do they put this cover over on marathons you see like there's almost like a foil mm -hmm. that they put over what what what's that for usually if the weather is colder if, if uh ah. If your if your body is under stress and and you're feeling like you're shivering, so they throw this out. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Do you ever stop when you're in mid race? Is the idea not to stop, keep going? And do you manage to do that? If you need to stop for a reason, yes. You know, I don't know, like drink something or, or, yeah. or something's her tie your shoe lace. <laughs> but the idea is to keep moving. Sure and, you and you tell yourself from, I tell myself from the beginning, I'm not quitting. So even if I have to crawl down to the finish line, I'll do it. I'm going to send you David Gawkins' recent book. It made me want to become a Navy SEAL. I can't imagine what it will do for you who, mashallah, has 100 triathlons under your belt. I think Navy SEAL is the next level up. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Or the local Asa'iqa. <laughs> great, great book from, from, from one of the greats. And I think you will, it'll speak a lot more to you than it would to me, that's for sure. Biggest life lessons. What has been something that has taught you the most or you learn from the most or a lesson you gain from life? I learned a lot of lessons from life, but the biggest lesson that I learned is sometimes we try too hard to control the outcome. You know, we try to kind of manipulate fate in order to make it go the way we want it to go. But sometimes there's a bigger reason of why things happen. So we need to, we need to do our homework. So you need to train hard, you need to work hard, you need to go to go do whatever you're supposed to do, but let go of the outcome. Because the outcome will happen the way it is supposed to be. زي ما ربنا يعني كتب يكتب لكن إحنا علينا إتقان العمل ونعمل يعني الواحد يعمل الحاجة whatever you do you do fully heartedly to the best of your abilities ability, but you let go of the attachment to an outcome. Is this something that you recently landed on or how long have you been living with this mindset? Oh, for the last few years. Mm. I feel like I've gone through a lot of changes in my life where it made me feel like, okay, even the change that you've, you, you, know, you think is good or is bad or something you're attached to an outcome or you're attached to a place, but sometimes there, or there's always a bigger picture, but we just fail to see it when you're so attached to the outcome. Even with my, you know, Ironman and my races and stuff, sometimes if I'm attached to an outcome of I want to finish under 12 hours, but maybe finishing under 12 hours is not the best thing for me now. <laughs> Bigger picture. Or maybe I, you know, if I don't get to Kona, like it took me, took me 13 years to get to Kona. So, but maybe if I, it was meant to be, meant to be that I would go to Kona after the 13th try, not after the first try, because maybe it, may, it is more special that way very wise perspective point of view assessment mm -hmm. so then it makes you feel that you don't get uh, angry if you didn't get something of your but that doesn't mean that you don't try you always try your best and you always try or I always try to do my best in whatever task I'm giving because that is my responsibility but the outcome is not my responsibility mm -hmm. We also uh, live in an era where it's all about immediate results. We post a picture on Instagram. How many comments, how many likes, how many, how many? It's instant gratification. Something I learned in, in me building this podcast is that it takes time and consistency is the name of the game. The more people see your episodes once a week, once every 10 days, that consistency is what will get you there. Not immediate gratification, which is the world we live in today. But Iron Man teaches you that. Teaches you. Teaches you consistency, consistency and patience because you cannot, you know, I can't train for an Iron Man and say, okay, in, by next month next, I'm going to yeah. be ready. Yeah. You need time. Compound you need about interest. a year to do that, and and even during the race, 
you're not going to get the result except if you're consistent with your effort for the whole 12 or 13 or 15 hours. That's going to get you to the result. If you go fast in the beginning and you end up walking the marathon, that then that's not consistent. So that training that we we go and we train our body to do day after day builds that resilience of being patient. Yeah. It's like anything in life, Dr. Dina. It's all about compound interest. Your relationship with your daughter, daughters or son, it's not because you were there for them one day, you were there for them all the time. You training for triathlon, it's not because you did it once, you did it constantly. Someone once said to me like, you can go have the best gym session ever. At the end of that session, you can look at yourself in the mirror, nothing would, 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 would change, you know? <laughs> That's true. But have the best day in the gym, five days a week for 52 weeks for one year. Take a picture, week one, take a picture, week 52. Unrecognizable, compound interest, the true. 1% better every day. Absolutely. And that in tabig ala, like life in, in Absolutely. general, and even more so in your line of... Uh, of work yeah, as so far as I, training regimen is concerned. So like go go at night and reflect back before sleeping and say, am I 1% better today? Am I 1% better? Wow, if you can get 1% better every day, you, you will be untouchable. But 1% is also a perspective. Could be 1% of how I'm feeling. <laughs> Could be 1% of how am I grounded? Am I focused? Am I patient? Am I acting with my heart? Am I acting... You know, am I doing the best? That is my one percent. Do you speak to a therapist or someone who can help you, you know, like find your footing in life if there's something that you have a problem with? Do you speak to a professional? I wouldn't say a professional, but in my life I learned to um, go to mentors. Mm -hmm. So in my job, I have a mentor. I always feel that there is somebody that knows better than me. Yeah. But it's not like a one person that that can handle everything because my life is so <laughs> diverse and, and it's in different compartments. So I would have someone in dentistry. I would also have a coach or a mentor that I would go to and say, well, oh, you know, my training is not going well or maybe I need help here or I need help there. It could be someone in life that, you know, an elderly person or a father or someone that is older that would give you a perspective of life and what life was when they were young. And, and I love sitting with older people because you know that they got, they're looking at life reflecting back and you're still in the middle of life reflecting forward. So I'd love to just listen to them and see what they think life was about. And most of them have already figured what life is. So they put stuff in perspective. They don't get angry over little things because they know that there's much better, much bigger value of life than the little tiny things that just irritate us and make us, you know, angry or upset or ah, oh, this is I'm late or this is traffic. These are all minor stuff in the grand scheme of life. So true. I heard someone recently say that an 80, 85, 90, 95 year old passing away without us benefiting from their wisdom and knowledge is a huge loss to society. Absolutely, absolutely. It made me realize, and yeah, it's like a Ken's, it's a treasure. This person has seen 90 years of, so if you didn't like manage to get some stories from them, uh, and, and that's why I think it's important to, to, if you're able to write a book to share your, or a biography or something, Reading a person's biography, I think, can can really take you a long way to to know the do's and don'ts of someone who has walked. Or you could just uh, simply sit with your parents. Yeah. Because these are people that you can relate to. Yeah. They can tell you their stories of what happened and what when they were young they did this and they did, and what is life now and Comparison. how they look at life now compared to what they saw how they saw life yeah. before. Yeah. It's amazing. That's my older uncles telling me when I, whenever I'm around the, the family, they're like, oh, Mohammed, we heard that uh, you work in radio. <laughs> no, I do not work in radio. <laughs> it's, first of all, I'm like, it's decentralized media. They're like, what? I'm like, <laughs> it's a podcast, okay? Radio. <laughs> I, can, I can show you better than I can tell you. <laughs> I love this question. I stumbled upon it recently mm -hmm. and I've asked it to the last three or four guests. I'm going to ask you. What have you been better recently at saying no to? And it's one of my New Year's resolutions. Good. 
Good. I have I'm to. not usually a good person at saying no, because if I feel passionate about something, I'm like, yeah, yeah, bring it on. <laughs> so I'm learning now to respect my time and just think back before I say yes to can I manage this or not? Can I add more to my life or not? Because it's also unfair to do stuff halfway. You got to, I'm, my resolution is to be fully present in whatever I want to do. So in order to do that, I have to say no. You'd rather do one or two things. Or I wouldn't say no. I would say when I have the time, I can come back and discuss this again. I was actually but wondering. right now, I don't have time to commit to this. That's one of the best answers I've got, if not the best. Thank I'm you. not saying no. <laughs> I'm going to park it until I can assess whether this thing is going to serve mm -hmm. me and if I can serve it as well. Mm -hmm. if, if I can give it the time that it needs. Something that's improved your life so much that you wish you started doing it earlier. Drumming. Drumming? Drumming. <laughs> Tell me more. I love drumming and I discovered my passion for drumming. Interesting. Uh, Tabla in Arabic. Tabla. But Tabala. in a different way. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow drumming sounds better than tabla. it does. It does. Yes, it does sound way <laughs> more sophisticated. More yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Tab, how did how did you? So land this on is that? something that if I have more time, I'll give more time to taking professional drumming lessons. <laughs> I've taken some, but in and out because I just don't have time now. The full-on band type of drumming, like where you have five or six. The uh, Yamaha. La, la, more Yamaha. La, more of like the the African jambe drum or uh, or tabla or tar. Or... Super interesting. The solo. How did you it. stumble upon it? I heard the drum. <laughs> it's just like exactly the same story how I stumbled on Iron Man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Seems to be the story of Brilliant. my life. Yeah. I, it I, found you. It found me. <laughs> I, 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 I heard it. I went in the shop and I saw there was an African guy. I'm like, uh, uh, do you sell these drugs? Yeah. I'm like, can you teach me? He says, okay, I can teach you. <laughs> Fascinating. Well, do you practice like often? I do, I do. And maybe my uh, one of my goals is to become a master drummer. Hmm. Takes 10 years. Know, I didn't even know such a thing exists. Yeah, there's a master drummer. There I need the, you know. The, re, yeah. The front line. <laughs> you know, whenever I'm walking around. It's it's a beautiful, drumming has it is. beautiful energy. Yeah. And it's very detoxing. It's just the vibration. It, it, it's, a, it's a movement with very high vibration. So it kind of clears all the, anything that you have negative. It's just, it's, it's powerful. When I see someone drumming in a street in Europe or whatever, I actually watch them like, wow, that's actually quite good. It's entertaining. It's good for the soul, like just yeah. watching it. Like yeah, it's... Yeah, yeah. And you have to drum from your heart. Yeah, yeah. If you don't feel it, then you're just not gonna... Yeah, yeah. Or if you, and, and it has to come from your heart, not from your mind. Otherwise <laughs> you become too stiff and you're not... It just doesn't flow Overthinking easily. it. Yeah. 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 And I so, so I go, I, like one of my favorite things to do in the summer is to go to a drum circle where the whole music is made by just random drummers. Like the whole beat is like, I don't know, 50, 50 drummers or so. And one starts beating and everybody starts kind of drumming to the beat of everyone else. So it's a community of energy. It's beautiful. I wonder if we have like a uh, a drumming community of you. I know, I know, we have it in the football. Uh, I <laughs> <laughs> somehow again, drumming sounds so much better. <laughs> so much better. We have that in football. And I, I, honestly, when I do go to football matches, and I hear the drumming that's that's part of the fan base, it it gets me. I want to play. Yeah. It gets me going. Right. And even the foreign players, I look, I look at the Brazilians, I look at the, you know, the Argentinians, and they are vibing to the tabla. Like yeah, you yeah, can, yeah. you can feel that it gets them going. It had no one does it like better than it had. Very true. The fan base of them with the tablas, it. I, if I speak about it anymore, I'll get goosebumps hearing it. Yeah. I wonder if there is a drumming community outside of the football realm in Saudi. And uh, if it's something that maybe, you know, in the spirit of you being on boards of, uh, you know, many of the things that you participate in, then maybe drumming could be something that could be brought into Saudi. 
I'm sure there is like it's part of the Arab culture but it's if very a few, part of the Arabic culture yeah, I don't know if there's a community it could be a community <laughs> I think yeah ministry, ministry I'm sure there's a community for everything Ministry of Culture will will will, yeah. will jump on this I yeah. feel we have now our arts committee we have our design I was in Riyadh last week for the Saudi design festival beautiful which is in its seventh or actually more than that Basma is going to kill me eighth or ninth year the Saudi design festival it was way bigger than I anticipated Not way sure. more people that I thought would come have had come and it's a Saudi design festival uh it's almost like if there is an interest of anything by the Saudis, we will put together an 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 an, an not, not an entity, but we'll put together an what is it called? An association or whatever like a, a community. Rep- community that will be under a a ministry. So that if you want to practice this, you will find your tribe. And it's that's nev- the beauty of this beauty. era, because whatever you want to excel in. There is the support and there's a the government support behind it. Yeah. A perfect day for you. What does it look like? Draw it for me. Go. Perfect day starts calmly. <laughs> coffee? I have coffee. Of course, that's the first thing. I wake up so I can drink coffee. Black? Black. Nespresso. No milk. No milk. No Real milk. coffee. Uh, and I would just sit. I like to take, this is something that I'm doing now different than what I used to do when I had a lot more things in my plate, is I, I dedicate a few hours in the morning where I could just meditate, I could just pray, I could uh, journal, I could just um, put what I want to do during the day, you know, just reflect and say, okay, this is what I want to get done during the day, this is the thought that I'm going to carry with today, this is what I w- need to let go of. And, and you know, think of look at my workout. Just kind of sit for a moment and and give myself a chance to be still before my crazy life goes on. How long do you do that for? Maybe an hour. An hour of meditation. No, no, not an hour. The whole oh, thing. The whole thing. Okay. And this is the Quran, and this is how much the one who is praying and so on. Your whole, time. My time. Yeah. Where where during that time, I don't like to check. Uh, you know social media I, I would not jump to do like emails and phones and stuff this is the time where I let myself just be this is a quiet my quiet time it's so healthy so I, I and I, I enjoy doing that because it's just very grounding yeah. and once I'm going after this then everything is go 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 <laughs> uh, just my busy life after that okay I'll, I'll do my workout I like to start with my workout so I, at least I get you know if I need to do twice a day workout let's say a swim and a run or something I would do the bigger part of the workout in the morning then I typically go to work from let's say 10 or 11 up to five o'clock I would go to my clinic and after that after five it's either another workout that I need to do or it would be family time or social time or just a chill you know go home have dinner watch a bit of tv and relax a little bit so we're coming up to 10 20 now are you typically asleep at this time? No, not really. No, I, I try to be. Well, I can ask Coop. Uh, <laughs> my, uh, he gave me a warning. Or how should I be more consistent with my timing? <laughs> what time are your lights out typically? Uh, 11-ish. Okay. I would. I like to sleep before midnight that way mm. because I, I get up around, let's say, 7 mm. at the latest. My whoop always thinks I have need more sleep. I always get the notice that's enough to get by. <laughs> this is barely enough to get by. <laughs> I asked you this earlier, but I, I'm, I'm going to ask you it again just so we can encapsulate as we gear up to the last two questions mm. of the episode. In three words, what has been your secret to success? I think my secret to success would be uh, having a dream and believing in my dream. Like my dream, not it, irrespective of to achieve my dream, but just really truly believing that this is a dream I want and visualizing that it came true. Because it's all in our mind. It really all is in, in our mind. If you, if you believe it, if I tell you, you look great, you look amazing, you're going to be 10 pounds lighter by, you know, in three months, and you truly, truly believed it, you probably do it. But if I tell you, you look great, but you don't really inside, you don't believe it, you're like, nah, she's just saying this to be nice to me, you're never going to be, you never, you're never going to achieve that. It's all in your mind. 
uh, 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 from a condescending side how people can put you down when you grow up if you feel like someone doesn't believe in you you can be so discouraged to the point that you might feel that you're not going to amount to anything but if you change that psychology of no i will be what i can see you can't be something you can't see you have to see it to then believe it to then go after it true and um, you have to be in from my lens you have to be passionate about it hmm. like i had the dream of wanting to be in kona wanting to and i saw that i saw myself but a lot of the people around me coaches people even family like it took so long that they started thinking that ah, she's never going to get there that woman really you just, just going she keeps dreaming but i don't think she's she's going to get there and maybe she can find something else or maybe it could be a smaller goal and why do you you know keep on putting this did, kona did on that a get pedestal back to you? did you hear that i did but people i never doubting be, you? but i never doubted myself good that was your fuel That was my fuel. Like I said, no, 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 no. I'm not I'm not going to go for something else. I'm not going to like do a half hour man instead and yeah. just say, "Okay, this is enough." Because this is not my dream. This yeah. is my dream. So and like, I only had one. That was my dream. <laughs> it's almost like people saying you hearing people say, "What? You don't think I'm going to get it?" No, watch. Hold my coffee. Stand right there. Watch me right now get it that's the fuel i needed true but uh, my, but my but this is a fuel out of your ego my fuel was not my ego it wasn't ego it wasn't like i needed to go because i needed to prove to people that i'm the best no it had nothing to do with anyone it was what i wanted for because yourself. for myself because i felt that was such a special journey and i saw myself there it had nothing to do with with I wanted to be the first or I wanted to be the first Saudi or the first Arab those titles came later but they were not part of why I chose this journey I didn't choose it because I felt okay this is a niche market that no one had tapped into before let me be the first one to get there no it was because something I felt passionate about and I felt that this was my dream and I wanted to get that it makes sense people have different ways of encouragement you did it for yourself for myself and i never i never did anything really for the ego like oh i want to be the first yeah. i want to just bah, kick everybody and no i actually want everybody to succeed and if that makes their, them happy and if this is their journey all right i wish you lots of love and go for it it's very big of you yeah to 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 do it for yourself and And, and and not feel like you're doing it to prove a point to anyone it's no yeah. and now my mission has changed where i okay now i want to pass that knowledge that i've learned and 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 what i've experienced and all the mistakes that i've done to the new generation so they don't have to go through a complicated journey mm -hmm. and their path could be easier and smoother what if i asked you what was your proudest moment when i achieved my dream <laughs> my proud when my foot landed in that island of hawaii i was the proudest what happened in hawaii no that was the race i was uh, so i my whole goal or dream was getting to the championship race which is in hawaii is that where kona where kona is oh. so when when the plane landed and i was there it, i was just Oh. It's a nice place. It's heaven on earth, Hawaii. It's such a beautiful place. What an amazing place to swim, run, and bike in. <laughs> it's a tough place. Swim, it's not bike, easy. and run. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's quite a tough, tough. place. Yeah, yeah. Because it's an island that is very powerful. Yeah. The elements are are really for harsh. sure. Yeah. Weather was okay. Weather is never okay. There, it's quite harsh. It's harsh. It's very hot. Very humid. Windy. Very humid. It's in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. But that's what makes it special. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they they strategically chose that place because it just it it brought all the elements into mm -hmm. one. Um, mm -hmm. Wow, what a talk! Thank you, Dr. Dina, for coming on the show. You're an inspiration to many of the Saudi and well, Saudi females and 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 males in Saudi 